everyone and welcome to today's Drama Hospital Recap. As always, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos or recaps. I thought it was going to be a lot later today. It wasn't. Life worked out well. So let's get right to it. So at the hospital, Liz and Franco have a run-in and he gives her, you know, $6,000 for summer camps for the boys and... Uh, he's like, see, this is me checking with you before I do anything, you know, here's, here's $6,000. And she's like, this is too much. And he's like, it's a gift. Someone gave it to me and I can choose what I want to spend it on. So she's like, who gave it to you? And he's like, really doesn't want to say. And then he says, Heather. And she's like, nope, mm -mm, keep your money. Right, Lonnie? Right, Lana? Yeah. You don't get to see Alana a lot. <gasps> oh, my goodness, I scared her. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just me. Oh, oh poor Lonnie. Um, that's pretty much Liz's reaction when Franco startled her. I'm sorry, Lonnie. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. <laughs> All right, so then he brings up going on a date together. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to need time to process this. And Rick overheard the whole thing. Okay, Lonnie's just like, no, leave me alone right now. I'm, I've am i had it with you. Uh, so Rick is gray, apparently. Is it just because I was watching it on a Super HD TV or like, ha is this new? Um, so he asks her out for coffee and she's like, no. And he's like, well, you go out with Franco, but you won't go out with me. And she's like, what? And I'm like, great. So he thinks she's easy pickings for a serial killer. Thanks. And she's like, well, at least he's been honest with me. Um, you know, not even just about the good stuff, about, like, you know, the ugly stuff, too. And Rick's like, I'm not going to let you do this. And I'm thinking, like, Rick, when, when do you let anyone do anything? So she brings up the lies he told to get her to agree to marry him. And she's, and he's like, yeah, pretty much the same thing you did to Jason. And I was like, oh, I've been waiting for this to get brought up. So she's like, well, at least Frank was honest with me. Uh, at the Metro Court, Scott is back and is meeting with Lucy, and she thinks he wants something, and he does. He's looking for work, and she says she has no work for him. Coco Cosmetics is broke, and it turns out her broker kind of screwed her over a little bit. You know, Raymond Berlin. I love how we heard nothing about this guy, and now everyone's affected. Um, and then Scott sees Naomi at the bar. So, uh, they approach and confront her, and Naomi's like, I don't have your money, I don't have anyone's money, and she literally shoes them away, and Lucy's like, no, I'm Lucy Co of Coco Cosmetics, and I want my money, and this is my lawyer, Scott Baldwin, and they ask more questions. So she doesn't, she says she doesn't know where the money is, if she did, she wouldn't be living like this, and they're annoying her. So, Na uh, Franco comes over. And says he has uh, $6,000 burning a hole in his pocket. And the name Heather Weber gets brought up. And Naomi has this, like, super weird reaction to it. Like, everybody's staring at her and going, Heather Weber, Heather Weber. And, like, like this. like, And she winds up passing out. So Carly comes over. Turns out the paramedics were close, so they were able to check on Naomi. She's like, I ought to throw all of you out of here. And they're like, no, we didn't do anything. And we're going to have a really expensive dinner. Uh, so then they do have said expensive dinner and he says he's going to hang on to his money. So she, uh, he tells them about the camp idea. Scott isn't supportive. He worries about Jason and Frank goes like, well, it's not harassment if there's mutual feelings. So Lucy's like, what are you and Liz an item? Also at the Metro Court, Sunny asks Carly more about this Wendy who claims that she could be Jocelyn's donor and he wants her to take it slow uh, because he has to focus on Julian right now. So like wait till he could get involved. But she's Carly, so she's not going to do that. So Sunny heads out, uh, Carly and Wendy sit down. Wendy comes over and she says she was a student trying to stay afloat. She had a friend who had a friend who had connections and you know she signed up to be a donor and she waited until a match showed up. So, uh, Carly asks for her medical records, and she has them, and then she, like, hesitates to give them to Carly, and she's like, you know, it all came rushing back to me, the trauma, the this and that, and, you know, I had serious complications post-op and could use help paying the bills, and Carly's like, oh, okay, this is about a payday for you. Alani, I'm really sorry I scared you. You were awake. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I feel really bad now. Uh, so Wendy shows her her scar, which Carly thinks is a little too far high up. And Carly writes her a check and says she'll get more after she receives the medical information. And then Carly starts asking her personal allergy and such questions. Though, So then she asks her blood type. And she says 
A, B, or she says B, and Carly's like, well, Jocelyn's B, or A, B, whatever. Whatever it was, it was no match, and this girl's a fraud. At Dr. Finn's hotel room, Hayden asks Dr. Finn if he's a drug addict, because, you know, that's how you approach sensitive subjects, um, and then accuses them of being a drug addict, and now they're both angry. So he tells her he has a way um, to get the drugs, so back off. He never asked her to do this, and she wants reassurance that he's not an addict. So he's like, you know what, you're an optimist at heart, even though you have no reason to be. And if I disappoint you, it won't be because I lied. And there's a knock on the door, and it's sunny. So she leaves, but it's really nice, though. And, like, Dr. Finn, like, he kind of has this tone with her that I haven't heard him use with anyone else. It was, like, dare I say sweet? Uh, so Sunny says that he checks out, although his colleagues are pretty quiet about him. And Sunny asks for his help in exchange for his help. So Sunny is going to arrange for Dr. Finn to take over Julian's case. And then he wants him to take care of him. And Dr. Finn's like, no, no, I'm not going to kill anybody, uh-uh. And Sunny's like, no, I want you to heal him. Julian's faking a setback, make sure he gets to his arraignment, and uh, I'll fly you to where the Z-Canestral is so sold openly and have a soft customs agent on your way back. Back at the hospital, Hayden is there for Naomi as she was called, a Mexican, so that must have been a lovely ride over. Hayden wants, uh, and Liz comes in, she's going to be the nurse, so Hayden wants another nurse, and Naomi wants to leave, and Liz assures her nothing will happen to her, so then she asks Liz about herself, Naomi does, and she goes through her family history, and when Elizabeth's dad's name, Jeff Weber, gets brought up, it has another effect on Naomi, and she has another panic attack. Oh, goodness, do you see where this is going? Because I see where this is going. At the quarter mains, it's, uh, this Carlos lookalike is Jose, but he goes by Joe now. Um, he's Carlos's brother. And Michael comes in and mistakes him for Carlos and threatens him. And Sabrina's like, no, no, this is Carlos's brother. So he's a pediatric surgeon, and Michael wants to know what he wants. So he was estranged from Carlos when Carlos died last year. And he wished he could have gotten a resolution with his brother. Uh, and then Carlos resurfaced, and he waited because he wasn't sure if he was ready for a resolution. And then Carlos died again, and he never got his resolution. So he wants to connect, and like, he, want, he wants, you know, to be involved in Sabrina and Teddy's life. So Michael asks why he and Carlos were estranged. I'm like, why do you think? Like, pediatric surgeon, mob enforcer, what could have happened there? Um, <laughs> but Sabrina reveals that she actually went out with Joe first, and then got involved with Carlos. So the real break was when he went to medical school and left Puerto Rico. He feels that he failed Carlos by not being there for him. And if only he had been there to give him a push in the right direction, maybe things would be different. Right, E-Cat? E-Cat's right here. Okay, I didn't scare her when I pet her. I know. I scared your sister. I feel really bad. Um, Joe gives her his contact information. She says she appreciates him coming to see her and says that they're all in a good place. And now end scene. So Dr. Finn says he will help Julian. Uh, Carly's mad to say the least. Um, turns out the scar this woman had is from her ex, who was quick with a knife, and Carly tells her not to come back. She still gives her the check, and Wendy's like, seriously? And Carly's like, just take it and leave. Goodbye. Uh, Joe thanks Michael for his hospitality. Michael says he gets where he's coming from, and he says Sabrina will let him see Teddy, just give her time. Uh, Carly and Sunny meet back up at the Metro Court. She says she handled Wendy on her own, and she's not the person that she's looking for, but she's in it for the long haul, and she knew it wouldn't be this easy. So Liz calms Naomi down. Uh, she goes down to the pharmacy to see if her medicine is ready. Naomi wants Hayden to stop fighting with Elizabeth. It'll do them both good to learn how to get along with each other. Why? I'm having this sinking feeling that I'm right. I didn't want to say it yet, but... We're getting there. Hold on to your hats, because we're just about going over the cliff. So Hayden is going to call Albert to tell her father about Naomi's condition. Rick apologizes to Liz. Liz calls Franco, and she asks him on a date for tomorrow night right in front of Rick. Ha ha ha, Rick. And then Naomi's talking to herself after Hayden leaves. And she says, your father won't care about me. Not the father you know. Not the father you don't know. Oh my goodness, are we really doing this? I am so into this right now. Oh my goodness. Hayden and Elizabeth are secret sisters. They'll have sisters, but oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I'm so happy right now because, you know, honestly, is 2016 going to be the year without baby drama? Is it going to be secret sister drama? Because I'm so into secret sister drama, you don't even know. 
Oh my goodness. You guys, you guys, are you excited as me? Because I am like living right now. I'm literally living. All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching today's recap. Tomorrow will be on time. Change of schedule. Work is actually going to be after German Hospital. So tomorrow's going to be on time. Don't forget this week, we're voting for plot twist of the week. And can we pick them or can we pick them? Villain of the week. It was perfect because Julian with the murder. Hero of the week. It was perfect. And now plot twist of the week. Oh my goodness. We get a new Cassidine. We get a new Weber, apparently. We get Carlos, not Carlos, Joe. I, I don't know how y'all gonna choose. Yeah, I, I really don't. I'm I'm just, oh my goodness, you guys. Living, living right now. Okay, um, I will see you tomorrow on time for more Drama Hospital, and I hope you have a great day. Bye!